Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm LT and today we're doing two separate things. First, a quick update on the ugly truck. We just installed a brand new instrument cluster, not brand new, but we installed a replacement instrument cluster from a different vehicle. This one is from a GMC and it actually has a 120 mile an hour speedometer instead of the 100 mile an hour one. And we also gained a transmission temperature gauge, but we actually have to program the odometer in the cluster so it accurately matches the mileage of the ugly truck because this thing has a pretty high score and we wanna make sure we keep that. And second thing that we're doing is a unboxing and a review of a tool that's actually gonna allow us to change the mileage. Now this is a sponsored video and the company that did sponsor it is called OBD Zon. They sell all kinds of different automotive OBD code readers and programmers. You know, everything from your basic handheld code reader um, all the way up to some more sophisticated things that'll allow you to program and read just about any module on a vehicle. And they kind of let me pick and choose which one I wanted and the one that I asked them to send me is the OBD Prog. MT601 and the reason why I selected this one is because it has the ability to program mileage um, and the reason why that's interesting is because I actually just swapped out the instrument cluster in the Silverado this one right here this is the stock one um, it's your basic 100 mile an hour speedometer has all your four gauges over here you know fuel voltage oil pressure and water temperature but down in this bottom left corner here there's just a blank spot um, but the one that I replaced it with is from a 2001 GMC Yukon Denali, if you guys want me to call it like that. Um, and this does have a few extra features in it. Number one, it has the 120 mile an hour speedometer, which we can use up every inch of that. And it also has the transmission temperature gauge down in the bottom left. Now, the problem with GM stuff is, let's turn the heat off there is the mileage is actually stored in the instrument cluster. And this one right here has 208,237 miles on it, which is quite a few miles. But uh, to me, uh, a high mileage is kind of like a high score on a truck like this. An ugly truck's high score is like way, way higher than that. The actual mileage that the truck has driven, I wrote it down on the back of the old cluster before I took it out. Um, let's see, that's upside down, but <clears throat> Uh, 329,692 miles is how far this truck drove uh, with this instrument cluster in place. And the other thing that this one had messed up is the little um, the display here that shows the gear position and the mileage. It was like on the fritz. It was constantly on and off. Um, so I just wanted to replace the cluster. But the trade-off there is you lose your mileage because... Uh, some vehicles store the mileage reading in the computer, the engine computer, but for GM trucks for 99 and up, I think to current, they actually store the mileage on an EEPROM chip that's inside that instrument cluster. So you got to be able to find a way to program it because your basic tuning tools like HP tuners won't allow you to correct the mileage. Now I have seen a lot of videos online where guys will take the instrument cluster apart. You have, you have to like desolder one board from the main board and then find the EEPROM chip and take that off and put it in a chip burner to actually be able to change the mileage. And um, the MT601 will actually be able to do that. So let me just do kind of a quick unboxing. I'll show you what comes in the package. Um, first of all, this is the tool right here itself, the MT601. And it just kind of has your basic layout on the front, a couple of keys, some arrows, an escape, and an enter button. Um, I did have this plugged in before. I tried it real quick. It has a cable. Um, this has an adapter on the end for OBD2, but it also has a few other adapters on the end. And on the inside, I'll show you real quick kind of what you get. We have just a little user manual right there. We have nice protective foam. Um, and this is what we have in the rest of the package. A few different adapters. This one, let's see, this says a Kia. This one is for a Honda, and this one is for a Hyundai. Uh, Hyundai, however you want to pronounce that. And then this right here, we have an adapter for an EEPROM. Um, this is kind of what, this is a chip socket here. This is what the chip looks like on the board. And this, this adapter has three on it, and there's... A few different styles here. We have this style that has a cord that'll plug into it. Um, this little adapter right here will plug into the end of that. And those can plug into, let's see, this is kind of difficult to do one-handed. These can plug into the end of this guy here, which would ultimately get stuck on there. So that's, if you wanted to take your cluster apart and put the and a solder on the wires or um, put in this little chip reader here, you could definitely do that. But we're gonna try programming through the OBD2 port because that's 
I'll be honest, I really don't want to go through the effort of desoldering an instrument cluster. I'm not, I could probably figure it out, no big deal, but when it comes to pinouts and things like that, I have no idea what wires go where. Um, so there's, uh, let's see, there's eight pins on each one of these EEPROM adapters. And if you took the chip out, it might be easy because you only can go in one of two ways, but uh, I might mess around with it. I might try my old instrument cluster and just see if it'll work. But anyway, um, this is kind of what you get here. There's also a 120 volt power adapter. You can plug this guy into the wall um, and it'll, I guess, send auxiliary power into that or something. Um, so anyway, let's get the tool plugged in and see how it works. All right, so here's where we're at. I have the little power supply adapter plugged into the end of the OBD2 port. Nothing's plugged into the truck right now. And that'll actually power on the device here. I don't know if you can see the screen right there. Um, that's kind of the main menu. And we will now, hopefully we don't mess anything up by having that extra power supply on there. We'll plug into the truck like so. And then turn the key on and see what happens. Okay, so there's the screen vehicles let's do cluster calibrate gonna go find let's see gm chevy of course silverado Top one, 99.01, mileage adjustment, mileage three, three, five, one, two, five, enter to continue. Uh, so I forgot what the mileage was, but just to try this, let's, because this isn't kilometers, let's try like 401, one, two, five. Uh, if this works, I'll just go back and actually correct it. But that's in, again in kilometers, and that should convert to miles. Uh, enter. Input value, yes. Communicating. All right. Let's see what happens. Adjustment complete. Look at that. 249, 343. So that's definitely higher than it was before. So now what I have to do is I will do some quick math. I'll get back with you guys. I'll figure out exactly how many kilometers 329,000 miles is. And we'll do this again for real. All right, in real time, it actually took about two dozen attempts to get this thing to program, but I've got it in there and it's fairly close, so I'm really happy with that because before it was like 130,000 miles off and now we're within 400. Uh, whenever you're programming a cluster like this, the EEPROM chip inside the cluster actually stores the mileage information in a binary code, which is like zeros and ones computer language. I don't know, but there is some resolution lost because we're converting from kilometers to miles, to binary. I don't know how it all works, but every YouTube video that I've seen about correcting the mileage, even the guys who will desolder the chip and plug it in, usually it's about, you know, two to 300 miles off. Now with this scan tool here, I don't know if it made a difference with the actual digit I put in, because the conversion from the 329 and 600 miles to kilometers, I think worked out to be like 530,000, 681. I don't know. I don't remember the exact mileage that I put in, but when I did put in that exact kilometer, it would never take. And so for some reason, just whenever I changed the number a little bit higher, I think I put in 531.111 is what I eventually entered in kilometers. And it immediately took it and converted it on the cluster to, drum roll please, let's see what we've got here. 330,111 miles, which is about... 400 miles more than the instrument cluster actually has on it. Uh, but I drove the truck 50 miles before I programmed it. So it's actually only 350 miles high of the actual true mileage on this truck. Not a big deal at all to me because I'm never gonna sell this truck. I'm never gonna represent it as a low mileage vehicle anyway, because let's face it, I've raised the mileage to 330,000. Um, I, I don't know the rules and regulations about changing your odometer. Of course, you just want to have this thing as accurate as possible. Um, but I suppose if someone was going to, say, charge you for every mile that you drove your vehicle on the public roads, then I don't know, maybe you could use this tool to 
I don't know. Just an idea. <laughs> totally don't do that. But anyway, um, real happy with how this turned out. If you guys want to find out more information about this tool, the MT601, uh, I'll put a link down in the description below. Remember, this is a sponsored post, so they gave me a coupon code, and I think it'll save you guys a couple of bucks if you want to grab one of your own. So head on over there to their website, uh, check it out. They have this tool for correcting mileage. They have a lot of other scan tools. Um, and if you do want to program EEPROM chips, this kit comes with everything that you should need to do just that. But like I said, I don't really feel comfortable working on a board level of the electronics. But once again, this is the OBD Progue MT601. So head on over to their website, check it out guys. Click the link down in the description below. I got to say thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Um, this was a short video, but we have some more cool uh, truck content headed to you in another few days. Check back soon, guys. All right, guys, I'd figure I'd give you this update just because we're on the topic of instrument clusters. I actually went downstairs. I have another Denali 120 mile an hour cluster and I have another 2000 Silverado. So I figured why don't I get this one programmed at the same time. Um, so here is the original cluster for this truck. Same exact thing as before, you know, 100 mile an hour and no uh, transmission temperature. So I threw in the Denali 120 mile an hour cluster um, and I got it programmed and here is the result. All right, this one's a little dimmer than before. 186, 751. And here's how the numbers broke down on this one. It actually programmed the very first time, so that was awesome. Uh, actual mileage of the truck, 186, 684. This is that many kilometers. I inputted this value exactly into the tool and we got 186, 751 for a difference of 313 miles over the actual mileage of the cluster and of the truck. But that's all right, not a big deal at all. Um, Remember how I said there's just that little conversion between binary and mileage and it's, it's never on these older trucks, I don't think it's ever going to be exactly spot on, but um, this cluster actually had 258,000 miles on it. So it had way more miles than the truck had on it. So I'm glad once again, I have the tool to be able to correct this. Um, so really awesome. Anyway, step side truck, one more thing done. Um, I'm going to be starting the all wheel drive conversion soon on this one, starting the cam swap even quicker and full headers exhaust, you know, all that good fun stuff. So stay tuned to the channel, guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.